Alicia Keys, welcome to the 100 Women. Thank you. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. You've had this incredible career so far, spanning, what, two decades? Almost. Not quite yet, believe not, it or not. But started writing when you were, what, 15? Yeah, I mean, I guess my first song I wrote at 11. Um, probably wasn't very good, but I wrote it. And, um, yeah, my first really good song was at 14. I want to take it right back to those early days of that 15, 16, you're an 11 year old that started writing music and then penned the tracks to what was then going to be your first platinum selling album, made you a global superstar. How did it feel then as a 15, 16 year old? When it finally did happen, which, um, you know, the song Fall In and and, and I remember, you know, in, being in the car, writing the hook to this song. And, um, and then I remember everybody hearing it and saying, I oh, love that song, I love that song. And, and um, I remember this song just having this effect on people. And I, I felt so good, you know. Um, it still hadn't quite happened yet, but I remember uh, everybody kind of doubted that that song could work because it was very different from what was happening on the radio at mm. the time, and um, which is kind of my life story a little bit. And 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 so you know, and people also thought that it was a very old person singing it, and I was only you know 18, but because it was very mature and it kind of had that soulful sound, everybody thought I was way older, which was cool. That was a cool twist. Um, but the first time I remember actually being like, uh oh was after I did the Oprah Winfrey show. And when I finished and it aired, I remember like a 70-year-old man coming up to me like, I loved you on Oprah. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> and that's when I started to really recognize the transition, that it was almost felt immediate. And I remember feeling so shy and I was so um, uncomfortable, actually. Because here I was just this girl that walked these streets all the time. And then suddenly people would say, oh, aren't you and don't you? And I was like, am I? And it was very, it was very uncomfortable. But of course, it was also extremely rewarding and exciting that finally this song and this music was going to be able to be heard. I mean, a massive adjustment that you had to make in a short space of time at such a young age. And being in an industry like the music industry, surrounded by some very powerful men, how much pressure did you feel to conform to what people expected you to be? Or perhaps these very powerful men saying, well, here you are, Alicia, thank you very much, and this is what we're going to do with you. You know, I was this, I was, I am still a tomboy. And I was this, you know, tomboy with braids and who wore leather jackets and Timberlands and played the piano. And um, that's who I was, and that's who I still am. And they just didn't understand it. You know, they were like, well, can't you wear the dresses? And can't you, like, look like a little more like this or act a little bit more like this? And I remember being really adamant. I was like, no, because that's not me, you know? So, no, I don't want to be that person. There's enough of those people. Why don't you go with all those other hundreds of people that are like that? I want to be, you know, this girl who is underrepresented, you know? Where does that confidence come from, though, to do that? Because I mean, to tell these people who have been in the industry for such a long time, no, I'm going to manage my own image, what you're going to put out there, where did that come from? I think it's just straight ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> just like, Which is great. Going to see what happens if you say no. No, I just think I didn't have any idea of what the other option was. To me, you know, it wasn't, I, wasn't in, I wasn't playing a game. It's not until you're in the game that you realize there is a game. Right. And, and at that time, I didn't know there was a game. All I knew was that here I was, and I knew who I was, and that's what I knew. So in a way, that's, uh, that was so good for me. And that was, that, that was kind of that New York attitude that just you say what you mean, you mean what you say. And I think that that, was, that served me well. And once you recognize the game, then you're going to choose to play it or not play it. And so, yes, I think there was definitely a time where I then um, kind of chose to play the game in a way that I thought was the right thing to do, which it was good. Everything's worked out. It's okay. But, um, 
but yeah, it did kind of take away some of my edge. It did take away a little bit of some of my, um, you know, uh, confidence to say, no, actually no. So, so that's that's actually been part of a big part of the journey, a big part of my journey. Another big part of your journey has been the huge impact that you've had on the R&B, soul, jazz sound of the last two decades. I mean, you've worked <laughs> along some biggest names. There's a long list, Jay-Z, Kanye West, just to name a few of them. Towards women, hip-hop can be so harsh. Mm. The way that women look, their status, their worth, and how do you hold your own alongside that? Well, that I've always been very clear about. There's never been a confusion for me there in regards to the type of woman that I, wanted, I want to be and what I want to represent. And that was very clear for me because of how I grew up and where I grew up. You know, I grew up in a very tough neighborhood, a very, very real neighborhood. I didn't grow up with trees and fences and houses that were pretty with nice neighbors and good people. Like, I grew up amongst the harshest of the harsh. And so I saw women all the time being exploited because I lived on 42nd Street. I lived in the middle of the highest prostitution that existed in New York City. Mm -hmm. I lived there, I walked there, I walked past, forward, left, right. That was my, that's my, that's, that was my neighborhood. And so I saw women who had to live that life because that's what they had to do, you know? So I saw that so clearly and I saw that so, so, it was so evident from such a young age that I knew, I knew forever that it was very important that, that I was able to uphold a certain type of woman, you know? Um, and I, I think all women are incredible because we all have our different challenges and roads that we're meant to take and that's no judgment to anybody's road but for me I knew that because I saw that and because I witnessed that it was very important for me like it's not a it's not a play to some people it's a it's an act it's a play it's a performance for me it was life you know and it was very important it still is important for me to reflect life you know why do you think hip-hop though does portray women in a certain way that has become acceptable I think that, uh, you know, when you grow up and you grow up in America and you grow up in black America, you know, it's very, very hard. It's very hard. It's very emasculating. It's very, um, it's a difficult, it's, it's a difficult life. It's survival. Mm. And when you finally made even the smallest anything, you know, you really want to be respected and you really want to have power. And you really want to show everybody that you have achieved and what you have achieved. And I think America tells us that success is ownership. You know, we own houses and we own cars and we own women? items and we own women and we own, and we own things. And that's what makes you successful. It's, it's been a, a way to almost be a man, you know, to be a respected man. And, and it's, it's, it's an illusion, but it's, you know, I get it, I get it. There's lots of illusions that women undertake or go through, and I wanted to ask you about the hashtag no makeup. I was becoming very, very overly concerned with how other people's opinions of me. And it was um, terribly oppressive. And to the point where I was, you know, I would be freaked out because I was leaving the house and didn't have makeup on. It's like, hello, you're going to get your son from school. Like, it's cool. Yeah. Or you're going to, like, go to the store and pick up a few things. But I, would, I was totally full of anxiety because I'm like, oh, but what if... Someone wants to take a picture, or what if, you know, what if someone wants to take a picture? My gosh, I was, as you see, there was a duality in my own mind. And I was just realizing that there was just so much that, um, so much that I, had, that I had learned and that I think we all learn, as, especially as women, you know, and girls. From the second that we're born, from before we even come out, you know, there's all of these images and, and these expectations and all of these um, you know particular pressures that are made us to think 
um, this is what beauty is, or this is what a woman is, or this is what a successful woman is, or this is what a, you know, this is what a, you know, famous woman is. What do you think we as women can do to push against that? I mean, what, what should we be telling our daughters? I, you know, I just, I'm one just for variety. That's my thing. You know, I just want myself and my daughter, if I had one, and my sons, you know, to see a variety of what people look like. Here's what people look like, you know what I mean? And we look a vast array of ways. And it's really not, not about makeup or no makeup or anything like that. It's about what makes you comfortable, and it's about also being able to explore different versions of what makes you comfortable and, 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 and seeing what happens. And you, may, you might not like it. You might try something, you're like, ooh, I'm never going to do that again. Or you might be like, wow, that gave me a feeling, you know? And you should be able to without your dad, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband saying, uh -huh, like, shh, everybody, shh. Stop. Quiet. Just give me a second to have my own experience in whatever it is, you know what so I mean? So how did you feel? How do you feel? I feel so good. I feel, so I was going to say, just even, you know, during the process of, choosing to not wear as much makeup and to really be much more natural and um, I would look at myself in the mirror and at first I was like I didn't recognize myself because I was like oh oh right okay <laughs> okay I don't have I, like the eyeliner makes it a little different and then the lashes make it a little different and then the lipstick makes it a little different and whatever right and I was like oh and I was like hmm I'm not sure hmm. and then as I continued to do it I would meet myself in the mirror and I'd be like, oh, right, there you are. And I knew that person. And if I would see myself on television, I'm like, oh, right, there, there you are too. And, and that's you. It's not like the, that's the that person and that's the home person. It was just like, it's all me. And again, it's all you regardless. And even for myself, when I want to wear makeup, that's my choice. I can totally wear makeup and no one should be able to say, oh, well, didn't you say you're never going to? Like, no, that's not what I was saying. Were you surprised at the amount of attention it got? Hashtag no makeup? Uh, totally, yes, I was. Uh, and it kind of turned into a whole thing. Um, hence the hashtags and the movements and everything. <laughs> but um, but I, was, I was a bit surprised at it. Um, but also in a good way, in a good way. Because I really, I was glad that we were having this type of conversation. It's a conversation you have on your new album. Congratulations, by the way, here. Thank you. Superbly written and performed by yourself. Thank you. But one track in particular that stood out for me, Girl Can't Be Herself. It's a beautiful song, and everything that we're talking about now, there's bits of the lyric in there. I'm not going to do it justice by saying it out loud. I'm wondering <laughs> if, I mean, if I can sing it for me, or, or a sentence for you that epitomizes what we're talking about. It does. Girl Can't Be Herself is... Um, a really, really important song on the album, and and um, I wrote it way before any of this other stuff kind of evolved. So it's just meant to be. It's been on my mind for quite a long time. Obviously, I've been finding my way there. But the the lyrics say, um, "In the morning, from the minute that I wake up, what if I don't want to put on all this makeup? Who says I must conceal what I'm made of? Maybe all this Maybelline is covering my self-esteem." Whose job is it to straighten out my curves? I'm so tired of that image, that's my word. What if today I don't feel like putting heels on? Who are you to criticize when beauty's only in the eyes of the beholder? And, and, and so behold her, you know? Behold her, however she is. Can you sing it for me? The chorus, which is my favorite part, says, When a girl can't be herself no more I just want to cry, I just want to cry for the world When a girl can't be herself no more I just want to cry, I just want to cry for the world It's so beautiful. It also is quite sad for me. I feel um, sad. Well, it's sad that that even has to be out there, right? That that message has to be given to girls. Yeah, it is sad, actually. It is sad that 
uh, girls can't be themselves. It's sad that, you know, sad that through this whole election process in America that, you know, because Hillary was so strong and clear and tough, you know, how, how much unnecessary uh, things were said about her being a woman, you know. It's like we as women, we can be any way. It can be many ways. And it is sad when you can't be yourself, you know, whoever that self is, whatever that is. Um, and, and, and that's, you know, that's a problem with girls uh, all over the world, you know. And, and there's so much oppression for women. And there's so much oppression for girls. And there's so many, you know, unequal opportunities for girls and for women. And it, it is sad. As the mother now of two young boys, then how do you teach them those values? Well, I mean, I just teach them respect, you know, that, that's my thing. Um, I think that they'll learn by what I do, not by what I say. And so surely, you know, they're, they're, lear they're, they're learning that because I am the woman that I am. But I think respect is the biggest thing, like respect people's things, respect, be kind when you speak to people, you know, respect people's bodies. You know, respect people's space. Be conscious. Be conscious of what you're doing. Don't just run up and do everything just because you're not paying any attention. Pay attention to what's going on. And so, to me, I think that consciousness and that respect is the most important thing um, that I can show them and teach them so they can be aware, just so they can be aware. And then they just have to respect their mama because I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> Or any woman that they come into contact Don't with. Don't do that. Yeah. Never do that to any woman. And they get it. They're going to get it. Mm -hmm. And if they, they don't, what's going to happen? They get it already. <laughs> <laughs> you, you talked about the divided nation, and we've gone through uh, one of the most bitterly fought elections in America's history. Um, y you've said in the past about Donald Trump that you don't listen to anything that he says and you said you don't care about what he thinks about women. He's going to be your next president, 45th president of the United States of America. How do you feel about that? I'm disappointed. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed that such so much hateful rhetoric and sexism and bigotry and and and. Um, Race, racial slurs and intolerance um, would be rewarded with a presidency. Well, I mean, you know, here we are in, in America, um, you know, built on the coming in of all cultures and all people from all places who found respite and opportunity here, you know. That's what makes America incredible. That's what makes it be that you can see people from all over the world and all kinds of backgrounds, cultures, stories, places, colors, skins, religions, beliefs, and we can all be in one place and happily going through our lives and finding our way to our own, you know, promised lands. Changing times, but America has had eight years under its first black president, Barack Obama. What will his legacy be, do you think? Obama has done some very in incredible things for the country. I think that what he's done really well, and which can't be easy to do, but he has really always come off to me as very graceful, as very tolerant, as very universal and human, and, and really understanding kind of the bigger picture of how we can all work together to be better and greater um, all over the world. You know, and I think that, that he's beloved for that. And, and that, is, uh, that is how we will progress properly with those type of ideals. You know, there's, there's still a lot to come to terms with in America um, about how this country was built, about who, about the ideals, about the oppression and, and racism. That's really, you know, is a deep, deep rooted issue in this country and I think that it's, this has brought that all to kind of 
just be very clearly open. Mm. There's no hiding that anymore. There's no propaganda around it anymore. And in a way, I guess that's what we need because it's time to really figure out how to move forward. Can women have it all? The career, juggle family life, do everything because people say no? Can they? Do you? I, I believe women can have it all. Now, you know, is it going to be really easy? No. Is it going to, are you going to get a ton of sleep? No. <laughs> um, and you do have to sacrifice things. You know, things do have to be sacrificed because you have to make choices. That's just like life. But you can absolutely have it all. You can. And, and I don't think we should feel like we can't have it all. You know, I, I think that, and, and having it all also means different things to different people. It doesn't all have to mean the same thing. Right. And, Again, I think that that's the most important thing that I'm recognizing and deciphering. What does success mean to you? What does it mean to me? It's personal, you know, it's personal. And to not allow kind of these outside influences of um, ways that it's supposed to look necessarily determine what it means for you personally. So same as a woman with a family and a career and dreams and and, and, and still things yet to be fulfilled. Can you have it all? Yes. And what is that to you? We spent this interview talking about your incredible career that spanned a number of years, starting at 11, 14. If you were to sit down with your 14-year-old self, what would you tell Alicia Keys? I guess if I was to sit down with my 14-year-old self today right now, I'd just tell her, like, stay exactly the same right like that stay just like that and don't hold back for anybody and don't concede for everybody and don't compromise don't compromise you can definitely be open to people's thoughts and things like that that's cool you can take in some things and you can add it all up but don't compromise and 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 don't try to make everybody happy don't make yourself happy what makes you happy first stay connected to that inner voice inside of you that says, oh, that feels so good. Stay in that place. And I would just like tell her to just, you know, just keep doing what you're doing because you're right there. Like you're right there. And in fact, I think we spent a lot of time trying to get right back there. So just do your thing. And in 14 years from now, who is Alicia Keys? <sighs> um, I sure, I'm sure I should know the answer to that question, but I don't. Um, I'm happily discovering a newness in me that is very, very beautiful. And I, I really want to continue to uncover just that truth inside of me and be able to access that creatively, access that you know, politically, access that emotionally, just as a human being, because it's healthy. And, um, and, and keep discovering who I'm meant to be. Alicia Keys, thank you for being <laughs> part of our 100 Women season here on the BBC. Thank you very much. My pleasure. When a girl can't be herself no more, I just want to cry. I just want to cry for the